welcome to the gray edition of Campus View. I'm Jenna Casey. And I'm Robin Aiken. And today we have some interesting topics and some interesting students to talk about them. So first we're going to talk about music and the Grammys that just happened. Here are joining us today is Elizabeth and Sharon. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us on the show today. So did either one of you watch the Grammys today? Um, <laughs> I No, I didn't watch the Grammys, but I heard all about it on Twitter and Instagram. So you yeah. like secondhand watch yeah, the Grammys. Yeah, I didn't give them my like viewership, but I did like hear about like all the drama and stuff. I personally did not watch the Grammys, but I watched a lot of recaps of it this morning. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of surprising things that happened. It's just like such a long show. How long <laughs> is it? Long. It's a, it's a long time. I wouldn't know though. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. But I know that um, Beyonce broke a record, I believe, of the most Grammys ever won by one artist. And good yeah, for her. She's got a lot of Grammys now. Yeah. She's very successful. So what are some of the artists that you guys like to listen to? Uh, I was happy Kendrick won. I feel like he put out like a great body of work. Um, Harry Styles, I figured he would kind of get like that genre of music. He's pretty good in that lane. So I would say like those two, I was happy about. Yeah, what about I, you? Um, I'm a big like Five Seconds of Summer fan. So they don't, they don't got any Grammys, but. <laughs> um, and I, my music taste is like really bad, honestly. I'll just listen to like whatever I think sounds good. And that can be like so different like day to day. Gotcha. So does the Grammys have any input on what music you listen to or what music you like at all? No, never. If, honestly, though, like, I don't know. I kind of feel like a lot of the songs that get nominated for Grammys and, like, end up winning Grammys typically are, like, really overplayed. So, like, I don't listen to them a lot. So, yeah. And what is your favorite Five Seconds of Summer album? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, probably their most recent one, okay. Five Sauce Five, that they released like the end of last year. It's really good. You can really see like their musical development um, from like their first like kind of album that was very poppy, and now they're kind of like, you know, less poppy. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. I agree. Um, that's one of my favorites for them as well. Um, but speaking of Five Seconds of Summer, I know a lot of us have experience of following boy bands in the past. Um, would you say that's your favorite boy band? Probably, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not like a big like boy brand person. I would say like, I was a One Direction fan like back in the day when it was like super popular. But other than that, like they're the only band that I really like followed like long term. Gotcha. What about you? Do you like any boy bands? Uh, not really, to be honest. I do listen to like just by chance a lot of K-pop, but not. I don't actually like know any of their names. Gotcha. I just listen <laughs> to the music and I'm like, ah, this is some well-produced pop. Do you like any boy band, Sharon? No, nah, not in particular. But like, uh, I like the red carpet event at the Grammys. So like uh, Taylor Swift, she had like a nice blue dress on. She, I don't know, she's a beautiful girl. So like, the blue was hidden right and everything. So I was like, that was cool. <laughs> Uh, Lizzo, she had like this crazy costume and it had like a hood on it. She like comes out of it. It's like kind of like cocoon. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. Um, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, he got there late, so he didn't really get to get all the pictures, but he had a pretty nice outfit. And there were a few other people, but I can't think of them. But yeah. Lizzo, so did you like Cardi B's outfit? Um, yeah, it was a little funky a little bit. But that's, <laughs> I mean, that's Cardi B. I kind of expected something like that, yeah. Lizzo really like, like killed it at the Grammys this year. I didn't realize she was like nominated for anything, but she got like. What was her like record of the year, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. And she she was the first like um, African American woman to get it since Mariah Carey. Wow. So like she had a really good like Grammy season. Yeah. I used to follow Lizzo a lot more closely, and I really love her music. I don't know if I know all of the songs on um, "It's About Time" or whatever I think it's called. Yeah. But uh, I'm really happy for her. Have you ever listened to Lizzo? I think I, like, no, actually. Really? Yeah, I don't listen to the radio. Okay, I guess that's a fair point. I, I mean, back in, like, whenever she, like, first, like, started getting popular, um, when Truth Hurts was, like, really popular in, like, 2019, I really got into her then, and I listened to that whole album, but I didn't listen to her new album because it just didn't, like, hit the same as the first one. Um, but I really, I do think she, like, is deserving as an artist um, for that Grammy. 
Like she she has worked really hard. So. So when an artist who like releases a new album, do you like spend time and like listen to the whole album all the way through, or? Um, I skip around, especially if it's like features on it. But I think eventually, like if I'm cleaning or something or cooking, then I just it'll just play like that, and then I kind of pick my favorites. But not initially when it comes out. And I think like some albums are meant to be listened to like all the way through, like in a specific order, but you know, some albums also like you can like skip around like he said. So it just depends on the album. If it's like a super long album, I'm probably not listening to it all the way through. And it also depends if like singles have been released prior to the album coming out. Like I'm not gonna like listen to songs that I've already listened to, like on repeat. It just it depends on the situation I think. I normally like to listen to albums all the way through just one time mm -hmm. because like you said, I think a lot of artists intend for like the order of the tracks to be intentional mm -hmm. and I like to listen to it, but a lot of the times I will turn on music and just have it as like background noise and then yeah. if a specific track like stands out to me, then I'll listen to that one like more than others. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I listen to music like all the time. I always have something playing. So a lot of the times I will just make like random playlists of artists that like I've heard of but I'm not familiar with and I'll just like listen to it. I don't have like specific favorite songs or like albums. I'll just listen to it absentmindedly. Do you do like the whole like Spotify rap thing? I am an Apple Music girl. I'm so sorry to break the news this way, but I use Apple Music. Yeah, same. <laughs> Me too. But oh do my you, gosh, yeah. really? Yeah, no. Well, because like I... Like, I never used Spotify, like, when it, like, was first, like, you know, coming up. And I always used Apple Music, and my parents paid for Apple Music, so that's just what I've used the whole time. Well, when I was, like, a cheap high school student, my sister paid for Spotify mm -hmm. Premium, and so I would just, like, bum it off her. Yeah. But I got Apple Music, and I just, honestly, like, I like how it works better, mm -hmm. and I, I, do. I don't know. But do you do, like, the... Is it Apple Unwrapped or something? They or? have like the like the top like 100 songs yeah. of the year or something like that. I don't. Yeah, I do. I do. But honestly, like mine was just like the new Five Sauce album. So <laughs> fair enough. Do either one of you have a say in the Apple Music versus Spotify debate? I don't know. It's tricky because like Spotify, they got like books, podcasts, all in one app. And like Apple, you have to. It's only music, or you have to download like the podcast app. So I use Apple Music now. I'm thinking about going to Spotify, but then. I don't know, it's, it's tricky, but I think, I don't know, I like Apple better, it's just I like the navigation of it, it's a lot easier yeah. and simpler. Wouldn't you find it a little difficult, though, to go back to, or go to Spotify Premium and have to, like, move all of your playlists or songs over? Like, that's what's stopping me, too. I would never want to have to, like, re-download and, like, make new playlists. Yeah. I, list, I put all my playlists through, like, eight tracks and stuff. Alrighty, well now we are going to move on to our next topic, which is campus dining and new restaurants all around campus. After this break. Robin and I'm Jenna thank you so much for joining us uh, we're talking about the best food on and off campus with Dominic and Mei Mei can you tell me a little about yourself yeah um, hi I'm Mei Mei um, I'm a fourth year communication major I'm Dominic I'm a third year MIP major so do you prefer to eat food on or off campus well I live off campus so I'm usually not eating my meals on campus usually it's just lunch if I am um, but other meals, I just I eat at home or off campus. I also live off campus. I do have a, a meal plan though, so it is clutch being able to go to these dining halls because they're super close and because I walk from all my classes. But the food off campus is definitely better. It's just more expensive that way. So, what campus food do you normally go to when you're eating on campus? When I'm on campus, I usually go to Scott or I'll hit the Union up just because I have a lot of classes around there. Gotcha. And then, maybe, do you remember like what your favorite food on campus was to eat? When I lived on campus, I would go to Curl Market a lot. I would always get their burrito bowls, um, but I honestly haven't been in a while, so. Where are you guys' favorite places to eat when you're off campus? For me, definitely Chipotle, just because it's close to where I live and it's always good. You can always switch it up if you want, but. Yeah, I love a good bowl. So like Chipotle, <laughs> um, Bibi Bop, 
Also, Roots Kitchen, it's delicious, but it's a little pricey. About you, Robin? Uh, I don't know. I've been going with my friend a lot to the Diaspora recently. Okay. It's every We've been doing a thing where every weekend we try to go to a new restaurant somewhere in Columbus. And all, uh, It's kind of interesting because if you take the bus and you get away from, like, the whole college zone, you can really expand your views and get a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I would say I eat Chipotle a lot and I really love um, Potbelly's like sandwiches. I don't know if anyone's like, I normally order it because it's not that close to campus, but um, I mostly stick with like Chipotle or Noodles and Company, something that's really close to like North Campus. Um, what are some of the worst foods on campus in your opinion? Moral Tower Dining Hall is <laughs> atrocious. It's pretty bad. I lived in Lincoln my freshman year, so okay. that was like the closest food to me, and I still, I only went a few times because it was that bad. Really? Yeah. Wow. I've never been there personally. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Good to know. Do you have an opinion on that, Dominic? Uh, I've never had any food from the Towers, so I couldn't put any input on that, but I know that whenever I go on the Grubhub app and I'm looking for food, there's a, I forget the name of it, there's a, one of the trucks outside of, it's on right outside North Rec. Uh, I think they do like soups and chilies and the pictures that they put on the Grubhub are not appetizing at all. I've never tried it myself, but it does not look very good. Gotcha. Some of the pictures they put on yeah. the Grubhub app are really, <laughs> they really bad. They could do a bad. better job. Like, <laughs> there was one and it was like a muffin and it was like white blank space, yes. horrid lighting of this muffin. I'm like, how do you make that look on Sometimes it's also just not accurate at all. Like the pictures mm -hmm. on there, it's just not what it looks like in person. So. Yeah, yeah, sure. So what do you guys think is the best part about having so many restaurants right off of campus? Like, do you think that's a good thing or do you think that it's more of like a annoyance to you? I mean, I think Columbus is a bigger foodie city than people realize, so we do have a, a lot of great options nearby. My only complaint is that Columbus is not the most walkable city, so if you don't have a car, you're kind of screwed because the, the buses aren't great either. So, um, yeah, if you're able to access the restaurants, you have tons of great options, um, but some of them are a bit far. Yeah, the number two bus sometimes just stops at the hospital and you have to get off and you have to wait like 30 minutes for the next one. And they don't tell you when you get on the bus that it's one that only goes halfway. Yeah. I was scared to use Dakota buses the first two years that I was a student. And it really is unfortunate because you pay for it. And I didn't know that. So yeah, I'm, I did not get my money's worth, but I refuse to ride the Dakota buses by myself because they are kind of scary to me. Mm -hmm. But I do like going to like the short north area. Um, I know that's not too far off campus, but I do think that food in Columbus is like just pricey, like more expensive than like at home, which is kind of annoying to me. But when you say at home, where are you from? Are you from Columbus or no? No, so I'm from like the Dayton area, okay. if you're familiar. So everything is a lot cheaper there, but it's not a very fun atmosphere to be in Dayton, you know, like at nighttime. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my roommate, it's kind of interesting when people all come to Columbus because last year my roommate was talking and she's from such a small city that like the only restaurants they had was like a McDonald's, a Chipotle and a single Chinese place. Mm -hmm. So she's just never had any other types of food. Yeah, that's about the same from where I'm from. I'm from a city that has like around 20,000 people, so it's really small. It's all chain restaurants. It's all drug stores. Mm -hmm. Like, it's nothing fun. So I do appreciate that in Columbus, that there's a lot more um, like family-owned restaurants. There's a lot of different cultures. Um, and I just really enjoy that. Do you guys have a lot of restaurants from where you're from? I grew up um, for like the first 15, 16 years of my life. I was in a tiny rural farming town in Northeast Ohio called Garrettsville. Um, there's like 2,000 people, one stoplight, and weirdly like five pizza places. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it was like five pizza places, a McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Subway, that's about it. Wait, I think I've been to Garrettsville. <laughs> there's not much to do there. I don't know why you'd ever be there. <laughs> no, I think we had a football game there. Okay. And I remember being startled because on the drive there, we were like, wow, so many cows. A lot of cows, <laughs> yeah, cornfields, yeah. What about you, Dominic? I'm from Columbus, so I'm used okay. to all the options that we have around here. I live like 20 minutes away from campus, so it's super nice being familiar with the place. One place I, I did find since coming to campus, uh, it's right on Lane and High on that intersection, right by the Chipotle. It's called Ninja Grill, 
It's hibachi. It's like fast food hibachi. If you guys are into that, it's super good. I definitely recommend it. It's a little more expensive, but it's good. I've been there one time, and I'm kind of scared to go back. Not because of the food. The food was actually very good. My friend ordered like either squid or octopus, and I was oh. like so taken aback that they just like sell that there. And I was like, it like I don't want to say gross me out because it's not like that. But I just was like. I don't know, like, how, how good are they about cross-contamination because I don't want to eat a squid. Was it cooked or raw? I don't remember. He said it was very chewy, but I think it might be chewy even when it's cooked, so I don't, that's not helpful. Because uh, I've had, like, raw octopus. It's pretty good. Really? Yeah, it has, like, this, it has the taste of fish, but the chewiness of, I don't know, octopus. <laughs> Yeah, I've had, I forget what it's called, but it's like a Japanese like fried octopus ball. Oh, and takoyaki. Yes, takoyaki. I honestly didn't like it. I was expecting I'd like it more than I did, but the fishy flavor plus the texture threw me off. Yeah, that's fair enough. I don't eat a lot of seafood. I The only seafood I've ever had that I actually enjoy was like um, Korean fish cakes in mm. Dokboki, which was really mm. good, but... Yeah, I'm not much for seafood. I know we have sushi on campus, but like... It's questionable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that Justin Fields used to buy it because there was a, somebody found his receipt and they posted it on Instagram. So I guess it's Justin Fields approved at least. Mm. <laughs> Anything else? Any other food recommendations? How about we, ha we leave it off with a good recommendation from our Columbus native? Okay, yeah. Like I said, Ninja Grill would definitely be my recommendation for everyone in the audience if you're looking for a new place. <laughs> It's right on the corner of North, uh, North High and Lane, so right by B-dubs there. Super good. And when we come back, we're going to talk about spring break and students' plans. I'm Jenna and we are joined with Christina and Megan to talk about spring break. It's about a month until spring break and have you guys finalized your plans yet? Um, well my friends and I were kind of in a dilemma because we wanted to go to Puerto Rico um, and I brought that up like two months ago and then we waited way too long and now it's so expensive. So now we're just trying to find somewhere in Florida but flights are expensive. Everything's expensive right now so we're yeah. just trying to find something <laughs> cheap in Florida. My friends and I actually just finalized our plans this weekend. A few of us are going to Tampa Ooh. for a week, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Do you have any fun plans, Robin? I'm just going to, like, sit in my room and play video games all day, probably. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, wherever you want to spend, it's fine. I mean, me personally, um, my one of my friends that I was planning to go on a trip with, she actually has to have surgery, um, like, the day before... St. Patrick's Day, I believe. So I think we're just planning like a fun, like two day trip, like somewhere close to Ohio or I don't know, somewhere even in Ohio, just to like get away from the campus, but not be too far away. Um, do you guys normally go to places for spring break or is that like something new as you come to college? Um, I feel like I've always gone somewhere. Freshman year, my friends and I went to Florida because it was super cheap during COVID, like no one was traveling. So we got to go there. And then last year, we just took a year off, and now this year we're trying to get back into it, but again, just trying to find the cheapest place. Yeah. So I went somewhere last year with my friends for like our senior spring break trip, and then I'd say with my family, we probably go like every other year. We normally do like cruises places. That's awesome. I've never been on a cruise. Would you, what, what's your favorite place you've been to on a cruise? Oh, that's a great question. Probably, the Cayman Islands, I would Ooh. say, or like somewhere in Jamaica. We normally hit like a lot of places in the Caribbean and South America. That's awesome. Have yeah. you ever been on a cruise? No. <laughs> I haven't either. I, I want to, but I also am like a person who watches conspiracy theory videos. And there's like, p there's videos about how like Disney cruises like cover up crimes and stuff like that. So <laughs> allegedly, obviously, but <laughs> I'm like afraid of cruise ships now, but that's a me problem. My so. mom watches this reality TV show about like cruise, like the cruise on a cruise. 
and it just turned me off from the whole thing. <laughs> Mostly because all the people they're serving are like stuck up rich people. How mm -hmm. often do you guys plan like trips with your friends? Like, is that something you do a lot, or is it something that you wait to spring break to like do? Um, my friends and I usually go somewhere every summer, and then we try to for spring break. So I would say like twice a year, like out of state, but then like sometimes we'll try to do like fun weekend getaways here and there. Gotcha. Yeah, for me, um, I have a few friends with beach houses like back at home. So we normally do a few trips down there every summer. And then I also live really close to DC. So like a day trip to DC is definitely something we do frequently. That sounds really fun. I know I'm planning a spring break trip for my senior year, which is next year. But like I said, this year, we're not doing anything too crazy. Um, how long does it take you guys to plan a spring break trip? I feel like longer than it should. I mean, like, <laughs> there's like eight of us in our group, so it's hard to coordinate, like, okay, when's everyone's class is done? Like, when can we leave? So, I mean, it's taken us two months and we still haven't booked anything, but I feel like if we just all got together one night, we could probably get it done, but yeah, just way too long. <laughs> yeah, my friends and I have known that we were gonna do something for spring break probably since like October or November, um, but the plans, came together about a month ago and then we actually booked the flights this weekend. Normally I'm like the one that plans everything and then I just send it out and I'm like, okay, you owe this much money. Let's make this happen. <laughs> so you're like the leader of your group. Yeah, I feel like if I'm not, like it won't get done. So <laughs> right. it's no, I'm exactly better to be in charge of it. Yeah. Do you guys like plan things down to the day or is it more of like, a, well, uh, we'll be in Tampa for a week. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, I don't really have like an itinerary. We just like kind of look for a place that has like a beach nearby and shops and restaurants and stuff. Um, and then we just kind of go with the flow once we get there. I'm the exact same way. As long as I'm like near the beach and in the sun, I'm going to be content with exactly. whatever we're doing. I feel like it depends on where I go though. Like if I'm going to DC, I'm not just, like, I'll be in DC for four days. Let's <laughs> see where I'm going to go. Like I'll buy like tickets and stuff. But if I'm going anywhere that has a beach, I'm like, okay, so these three days, don't text me, I'll be at the beach and then we'll figure everything else out. But I I actually, in like my day-to-day -day life, I am a planner, like I like to have things planned out and I don't like last minute stuff, so it's kind of interesting. Do you feel like you guys like are different when you're on vacation or do you still feel like you follow like routines like you would at home? Yeah, I'm also like very type A, like have to plan everything out. So I feel like I can't go like completely without routine on vacation, but like, I'm probably more lax like on vacation than I am at home. A lot of my vacations so my family like, goes to the beach every summer and same beach, same house. So like I have like a set routine even if my day to day setup is a little different. Um, I mean, again, as long as I'm like sitting on the beach for most of the day, that's what I like my routine to be. So are you a planner when you go on vacation? Uh, all the vacations that I've gone on have been with my family because I haven't done any vacations for the past like three or four years because I'm a, just a little immune to compromise so I just don't want to take the risk of traveling but my dad does all the planning and he is such a type A person oh my god well especially if you go anywhere in America because if you don't plan everything out ahead of time it's not like you can take public transportation to get anywhere well it depends if you go to somewhere like Chicago you can just hop on the L and go anywhere I that's one of my favorite places I've been like within the United States and I love their train system like it is a little scary like because if you get on the wrong train and you don't know where you're going like it's very overwhelming but I love that you can get to like one end of the city or like go somewhere completely different in like 45 minutes versus like if you go somewhere like Florida where there's a lot of traffic or you know other things but I really I, I would agree I think it depends on where you go and like what the transportation is like. Yeah, New York City is kind of the same way. That's one of my favorite places, but I just love, you can hop on a taxi or the subway and then you can get to places so much quicker. Yeah, for yeah. sure. What are your favorite things to do in New York? Uh, so my dad's from New York, so we he's from Long Island, so we kind of, we go to the beach on Long Island, then the city, we'll just walk around, eat some pizza, catch a Yankees game, just kind of explore the city because it's so big, you can always find something new. That's awesome. So for you, is traveling more about like the activities or the destination? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like it's more about the activities. Like I'm, I love laying on a beach and doing nothing, but then after a couple hours, I like need to do something. So I just love like trying new things that I wouldn't be able to do here in Columbus. 
see, I was, I had the same line of thought, but I also was thinking like every every like state that's on the coast like you can go to the beach but like not every state has the same attraction so i kind of like to go um, to different places for that kind of the same reasons Mm -hmm. i'm the same way like if you're going to a city you definitely need a schedule to make sure like you're getting the most out of your time but if you're going to again like someplace warm a beach like i literally can just be in the ocean for hours and not care Alrighty, well that's going to wrap up our gray edition of campus view thank you so much for joining us today Great night.